Pillows and around the world, it's time to praise the Lord. on Praise the Lord from the vacation capital of the world, exciting Central Florida, as we bring you anointed pastors, evangelists, teachers, authors, and other special guests with testimonies and teachings and music to glorify God as we lift up Jesus Christ as Lord. Lord, everybody, welcome to our Praise the Lord program today. I'm Pastor Gerson Toronto. I pastor, I'm honored to pastor Generation of Faith Church in Kissimmee, Florida. And we're coming to you to whole, the whole world, not only to Florida, where we're coming to you from Orlando, Florida. A lot of people, you know, come here in vacations and they go to the parks. But I believe that God is starting something new in Orlando. As I was preparing for this program, I was meditating in the, in the word, in the book of the prophet Jeremiah chapter 1. And the word says, before you were born, before I formed you in the womb, I set you apart as a prophet to the nations. And then he gives him promises. He, he says to Jeremiah, I anointed you as a prophet to bring down, to build, to root out, to plant. In other words, not only I prepare a new opportunity for you before you got here, but I equipped you to have success. So I believe today God brought us to, to you today, to maybe to your living room, maybe to uh, the hospital uh, bed uh, room. Or I don't know where you are, but I'm here to tell you there is a word that God has prepared. There is a guess that is coming with a word. There is music. There is worship that I know is going to minister to you. And I'm excited to let you know that God has something better. Sometimes we think in our life and we feel stuck, you know. We just enter a new year. And we look back and there is a lot of dreams and a lot of plans that we had, you know, long term, you know, mid term, short term, you know, things that we wanted to do. And it was hard. But God is saying this is a new year. It's a new beginning. And don't you forget that I have set you apart for greatness. We're going to go to a song, and when we come back, we're going to have our guest. Remember, it's time to praise the Lord.
brought forth from the tomb of the resurrected Christ, the powerful Christ. And through his resurrection, he completed a plan of salvation. And he obtained a name that's above every name. That in the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that he is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And right now, he sits at his right-hand side, for we all have an intercessor, and we are free in the power of his Holy Spirit. my God, my God, the glory of the Lord, please come and feel this place. We have pastor here, Pablo Fonseca, but before we start with you, I just want to read up scripture Amen. that I have in my spirit, and then you and I are going to take off like wild men and just speak about the word of God. Amen. Is that all right with you? Amen. The word says in Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5, and I'm going to use the Amplified Version, it says, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, and I approached you as my chosen instrument. Mm. <laughs> and before you were born, I consecrated you to myself as my own. Mm. My God, what a word. I have appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Then I said, Oh, Lord, God, behold, I do not know how to speak, for I am only a young man. But the Lord said to me, Do not say I'm only a young man, because everywhere I sent you, you shall go. And whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid. This is the powerful one. Mm. Do not be afraid of their hostile faces. Mm. Did you hear me? You're going to confront situations in life where people are going to give you the look. <laughs> You're not going to make it. You were not built for this. You don't come from the right family. You don't come from the right church. You don't come from the right, from the right city. But God is sending us today to tell you, that do not be afraid of their faces because he has appointed you, set you apart as his own for what? To protect you. And then he said to me, behold, hear me. I have put my words in your mouth. I have appointed you this day over nations and over kingdoms to uproot and break down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. Amen. What a word. Amen. And we have here today, I praise the Lord again, uh, one of our regular guests here. He's been a blessing. He's, he's reaching millions of people. He's 22 years old. He had an encounter with God at 10 years old. He wrote his first book at 17. Come on, put your hands together here and in your house for the men of God, Pastor Pablo Fonseca, the man that God has put his word over his mouth. Amen. Welcome. Amen, Pastor Gerson. It's an honor for me to be here, for you to have me here, um, TBN, and, and, and to be a living witness and testimony to, around the world to see what God has done in our life when we just simply say yes to God. When you say yes to God, God comes from our future to speak to us in the now. And if there's somebody that knows us better than ourselves, it's him. Amen. Because God has, he knows us, he knows us like you were reading that powerful scripture before we were born, before we existed, he formed us. And, and, and when, when God calls us, 
it's a very intimidating, especially um, at a young age. Yes. I know yes. that you were also called at a young age. Yes. So it's it's very uh, intimidating when we're like, wow, what what is it that we're gonna say? We're in front of a crowd I don't now. Know how to talk now to I don't know how to talk to people. I don't know what is. I'm reaching a larger crowd that are that are much older than I am. So yes. how can we? approach and this. they give you the face of course they give a you that face the they times. give you that look and yeah. what the most amazing part about this is that age is just a number as young ministers of the lord as you and i we're just like road signs let's just put it like that we lead people to jesus you have unforgiveness the word speaks about how we can lead that to jesus you have difficulties you have weaknesses as a matter of fact we all have weaknesses yes. but satan tries to utilize those weaknesses to paralyze us. When Paul speaks in the book of 1 Corinthians, he says, in our weaknesses, he becomes strong. Yes. So we have to focus in the strength of God, which we can do all things through him who gives us the strength. Amen. Instead of focusing in the weaknesses that are there to also glorify God. I'll tell you, that, that scripture is powerful because it says, and I'm going to paraphrase now, it says, I put you together with my own hands. Uh, before I put your right arm, I put your left arm, and then your legs together. And when I built you, hmm. I built you with purpose. Yes. You're not a mistake. You're not something that just happened. Mm. You're not an unplanned baby. Yes. You are here with a purpose. And when you realize that, that purpose for you was created before you were created. Mm. Then you find out that when you came here, it was just the beginning of the fulfillment of God's idea yes. of who you are now. Yes. And, and it's powerful to me because you touched something powerful about our weaknesses. Yes. This is my belief. Yes. I believe that God on purpose left some areas in our life that he is the only one. Of course. That can make us strong. So we need him. Yes. So we go back to him. Yes. So we have that moment where he, he, he can find a right channel to just release his power and get his glory. Wow. And this was a young man. Yes. A young man called in a difficult time. Mm -hmm. Pastor, we're living in difficult times. We are. Just watch the news. Everything is bad news, negative words. But we are here today to give you good news. Yes. That's why I started the program today this saying, Praise the Lord. Yes, praise the and Lord. And everything that has breath, praise ye mm. the Lord. Why? Because he has prepared better days yes. for his children. Yes. Only God has the authority to change reality. Yes. Reality tells us that we're in dismay. Reality tells us that we're in bankruptcy. Reality tells us that we're about to get a divorce. Reality tells us many things. But when you believe and when you praise the Lord, God changes that reality. Amen. God speaks life where there is death. Yes. God, God, reality tells us that Lazarus was dead. Reality tells us that when Jeremiah was lifted up, as you would say, they were living in horrible times. But when, but like you said, God has an idea. And God reveals his ideas with his people. Yes. God does not want to see his people in distress, in dismay. God wants to be glorified. Amen. So what happens? How can the people of God glorify God in such a time of distress, in such a time of depression, in such a time that is so wrong and so negative? There's so much negative in this world. So what happens? God has to change that reality in the midst of depression, in the midst that this nation may be going down, in the midst of all that, he is glorified. And there is something positive and there's something glorified that comes out of the midst. There's resurrection. I always say, without crucifixion, there's no resurrection. Yes. We first have to see the death in order to see the life. We have to, to be glorify the Lord. Yes. We have to be broken to be we built. Have, we have. And, yes. And I tell you, I, I am a witness of that because many years ago, 15 years ago, uh, I was sitting in a church just being a musician, playing the guitar and being, you know, uh, I always say this because it, servanthood is so important. Yes. You know, and, and I believe that, you know, what God did with Samuel, you know, it was powerful. And he, where did he found Samuel? Hmm. He found him in the temple. He yes. found him doing things for him. He found him yes. serving. Yes. And the Lord found me serving. And this evangelist came from Tuabaja, Puerto Rico. Mm. And he called me out from the congregation. And he said, you're going to preach. And I'm thinking to myself, like, what? I don't even know how to talk. I don't even, I, I, I can't. I can speak in public. I, I maybe can sing a song, 
but to teach and preach. And then he goes and says, and you're going to do it in English. Mm. Now, my reality when I got here is that I didn't know how to speak any English. Mm. But his reality was, I brought you to this world to preach in both languages. Both languages. You just hit the turning point in your life mm. where my reality is going to invade your reality mm. and I'm going to be glorified. Yes. Isn't it that amazing how God yes. works? Exactly. When, when God calls us, it's very shocking because God's plan is much bigger than our plan. You know, his plans are based on eternity. You know, yeah. we're just focused on what we can see, the visual things. He's focused on the things that cannot be seen. So when he confronts with our purpose, when he confronts us with a call, he's, we're, we're like, but how can this be? At such a young age, I was not imagining to be an author of 10 books. 17 years old. 17 years old, I was an author of a book. Yeah, I received word, many words that I was going to be a preacher, that I was going to, you know, visit many countries to preach, which I have, and, but I did not find this, my, this, this, area of my life I didn't know I was going to be 22 experiencing these things so what happens that when God calls us at a time it's very intimidating because we're like how are we going to do this but the secret is that we're not doing it he's doing it through he us it. so when we let him move the way he wants to move and say God I'm just here I'm just a, 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 a vessel that you're going to use do it your way I'm out you're in so it's not me it's him in me he will glorify himself and he will do anything to be, bring his name glory. Isn't that amazing that God can take someone that has no hope and just turn that person around in seconds and use him for his glory? Mm. Think about this. This prophet that we're talking about was young, number one. Number two, the word of the Lord came to him in a, in a difficult time, and he yes. said to him, I have called you to be a prophet to the nations. Mm. So guess what? He never left Jerusalem. Mm. But the word of the Lord in his life traveled mm -hmm. the nations until today. Yes. The word that God has given over your life, the word that God has given over your family, over your marriage, over your body, it's still moving. Mm -hmm. God's promises are yes and amen. Yes. He never takes with the mindsets of giving more. Mm -hmm. He never asked with the mindset of multiplying. Yes. So at this very moment, I just want to encourage somebody and tell that person that if I'm 37, he's 22, and we're doing this, you can do it. God is not a respecter of a person, and he wants to do it with you that are in jail. I've been in jail. He wants to do it with you that uh, you're maybe in drugs. I was a drug addict. He wants to do it with you that are very much involved in crime, God took me out of there too. He wants to do it with you, that you're a young man in church. He did it with him. He wants to do it with you if you say yes. He said yes, 22 years old. Think about this, 10 books, because God has put his hands over his life. It's powerful. Yes. It's powerful. Yes. Tell yes. me, yes. please, I want you to tell me, out of, uh, time is limited, but out of all of the life experiences, where, how many countries you have visited? Because you, you've been in Argentina. Yes. Many of the states. Yes. But please, if you remember one of those powerful testimonies. Yes. That can really touch people. And then I want you to pray for people for healing. I, I feel strongly Amen. that God not only is using you in healing. Yes. But he's about to take you into a deeper level. Yes. In healing. Mm. Um, we've been experiencing for the last three years a changing of the guards. Mm. Which means God is lifting up new people. And, and the, the, the older generation is helping us to get to that level. We need each other. We're helping them with the strength. They're helping us with the experience. Yes. But there is a changing of the guard yes. where many of our, our awesome generals have went to be with the Lord. Yes. And they're retiring. Yes. And we need young people that we know how to flow in the supernatural. Yes. Tell me out of the many experiences, at least one testimony, and then pray for the sick, please. Well, uh, when I was in Mendoza, Argentina, many miracles um, um, took place there. It's very hard to quote all of them. Uh, but one of them was a, 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 a young kid. He was a 10 years old, but he was the size of a five-year-old. He had dwarf syndrome, and uh, he believed that his mother believed that he would be healed from that. He was not born to be a dwarf. 
and we were there 14 days in the, in the crusade, and we prayed for him that one night, and in 14 days, he grew 38 inches. My God. So he, this, uh, My he God. automatically healed us. Supernatural all, power. Supernatural power of God. Only God could do that. Cancers, tumors, diabetes healed. First night, over 50 women were healed of diabetes. My First God. night with, uh, with records, with proof, and everything. And um, another uh, testimony was a woman came without a vocal cords. She came talking. She she came talking very like a robot type. God created new vocal cords on the Amen. third night. So we've seen so many. These are few testimonies that God has done. The glory is to him. Oh, another uh, case, a, a woman came praying for her friend six months in coma because she had a, uh, what is that? Um, she had bleeding in her brain, in her head. And after you? six months in coma, she came as a point of contact. We prayed for her, praying for her friend, declaring the next day, Totally restored. She wanted to go home. She didn't even know why she was in the hospital. So only God can do only those God. things. We are the one who place limits. The word of God clearly says, he is not a man to lie nor son of man to change his mind. If God is not a man, take the limits away from him. If you believe, you will see a miracle in your life. Pray for the sick. Amen. Because I believe that there's people in the yes. hospital, there's people in the house, there's people in jail, yes. people in many places, and this word is going to heal them. Yes. Pray Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I just come and trespass my words into the hospitals right now and the homes right now of any people right now. If you are sick in your body, if you have a high blood pressure, if you have cancer, if you have diabetes, anything, if you have arthritis, scoliosis, arthritis, whatever, just place your hand where it hurts. And right now in the name of Jesus, I declare that the spirit of cynics in your life is illegal. If it's not born there, it is illegal there. And I just speak a total normalization right now in the bodies of the viewers right now that need healing. Right now, Father, in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, I speak healing right now, and I declare the person totally healed and restored in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Receive your healing in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen, amen. If you receive that prayer, you are healed. Now you are to walk in that healing. Yes. God is a God of the now. Yes. And he doesn't want you to keep living your life the same way. Yes. There is a reason why you turn on your television today. There is a reason why you, you locked in your computer to this program today. There is a reason why you're maybe going through YouTube today. And God is telling you the same way I put Jeremiah together, I put this guy together to bring healing to the nations. And he prayed for you. And I believe that God did it. He I did believe it. that God did it. He did Tell it. me, uh, what plans soon, coming on soon, you have? Because I, I, I feel like, you know, we should be teaching our young people yes. how to pray for the sick, how to move in the supernatural. Yes. Are you doing any kind of discipleship in your church? Or I just finished writing helping? my own apostolic discipleship book, a 300-page pure discipleship. I teach people how to pray correctly, how to believe correctly, how to ask correctly. Um, I teach people how to speak in faith, how to speak um, words of promises and not of problems. Many yes. times our prayers are focused on the problems. And we cannot be praying problems because the word of God says in Proverbs chapter 6, verse 2, look at it, look it up. It says that we are tangled. We are knotted with our own words and we are in prison, captivated with the words that we declare out of our mouth. So if we speak promise, the word of God says in Joel 3.10, 3, it says, let the weak say I'm strong. It says, call out the things that are not as though they were. We have to know how to pray. We have to know how to declare. If you're facing a problem, don't complain, prophesy. Declare life. So we, we're teaching people how to speak correctly, how to speak according to the promises and not the problem. Because when you speak promise in the midst of problems, you're going to see glorious results, brother. Amen. You will see Amen. glorious results. Amen. It, it, it's, it's just what happened to Martha and Mary with Jesus yes. when Lazarus was dead. Yes. You know, he comes into the situation like he's coming to you today. And they felt he was late. Yes. So I always imagine this, you know, in my mind, because I like to imagine things and, and, and them two having a little attitude. Yes. You know, like, you should have been here, you know. You know how many times we spent time together at the house and, and you came and, and we fetch you good, you know, we serve you. Yes. And now that we needed you, you didn't come on time. Mm. You were late. And Jesus said he's going to re be resurrected 
And the answer was this. Yes, we know in the future. They answer with hope. Yes. We hope one day, one day. You know the song. Yes. <laughs> and he said, no, 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 honey. You need to look at me. Mm. It is not one day. I am the resurrection, the resurrection. and the life. And yes. I'm coming to you because I have chosen you mm. to perform my last miracle before I go wow. to the cross. Yes. So I choose friends mm. to do great things. Yes. I choose people that spend time with me yes. to create a round of glory. Yes. The Bible says that after Lazarus was resurrected, people started following and the crowd following him, Lazarus, was bigger yes. than the crowd following Jesus. Yes. They even tried to kill him. Wow. Because many people believed out of his awful situation. Yes. So we're here today to tell you, speak the right things, have the mind of God, think about the word of the Lord, yes. repeat his promises. He says something very powerful mm -hmm. that I learned a long time ago. Every time I have a problem, I start, you know, writing down all God's promises. Yes. My wife has everything written down. Everything, yes. everything written down. And sometimes she puts them in little sticky notes and she sticks them everywhere and she reads them and she puts them in, the, in everywhere. And everywhere you look, there is a promise, there is a word. God yes. always fulfills his word. He does. And I want to thank you today for being here with us. Yes. Thank you so honor. much. We got to do this again. We do. Because I know that there's a lot of people out there that they need, they need encouragement. Amen. They need a word. He has 10 books. Go to his website and, 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 and get a hold of these books. I believe that God has anointed him to write the right things at the right time. And remember to pray for, praise the Lord. Pray for, for TBN. Pray for Miss Jan. Pray for all the guys here. They're beautiful people that are here working to bring you a fresh word. I want to thank you for tuning in today. We'll see you next time. My name is Pastor Gerson Torado from Generation of Faith Florida here in Orlando, Florida. And I want to remind you, praise God. The Lord be blessed. This program has been brought to you through the prayers and contributions of our faithful partners throughout North America and the world.